Hey VC, John here, the Bip Bop Boom channel, and uh, we're just going to talk heavy metal today, and I just pulled out some records just to chat about them, and uh, housekeeping, I want to do a shout out to Leo from Too Much Metal is Barely Enough, he sent me a, a really big package from Australia, and it costs a lot of money to ship it, and uh, and... Whatever, I, I will, I've will. i been listening to it, some great stuff, and I will have a dedicated video to that. So uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Thank you, brother. And uh, if you haven't seen it, because there's so many videos, it's hard to keep up. But uh, Chris from Vinyl Transmission did the, uh, he had a guest, Dusty Rhodes. Uh, oh, it's just a killer video, especially if you, if you know Dusty Rhodes. But I found this laying around. And this is it's bad bad wrestling era. It's from uh, 1990, but still there's uh, Dusty Rhodes, and uh, I can show this. This is something I had. This this is not metal. We're gonna go to the metal, but I have this old uh, Bay City Rollers pin, and it's uh, on plastic. It, it's the vintage 70s, and it's from uh, Anibis Limited out of Essex, England. It's even got like the telephone number and room number seven, the address. But it's got this sticker on the back. And the other day, I was peeling it, saying, what, why is there like a white sticker on it? And I really get a kick out of this, but this is probably going to bore most of you. But underneath was like another sticker, and it has a number, and it says David Cassidy. And it put the white sticker over it. But I picture like in this like warehouse kind of room in Essex with these like older British women working there and you know they're probably doing posters and wrapping things up and and one morning some guy comes in the boss with I guess heavy British accent and is like Cassidy's out the rollers are in and like all the old ladies got to peel off the uh, David Cassidy stickers and put the Bay City rollers and then throw the sticker over the back and then empty the boxes and put the rollers in and the rollers, the Bay City rollers are the new thing. But I picture that. And uh, I, I was looking up this company, Anibis Limited, because I was just fascinated with this. And there's not much on the internet besides this defunct company, but I guess they set, like, they're in some law books in England. They set some legal precedent when ABBA or some Swedish company like Langstrom or something representing ABBA sued them because they were making t-shirts with pictures of ABBA. But they fought back because they had paid for the rights from the photographer who had the rights. And basically, this company won because they had the rights to the pho to the uh, photograph that they were using the shirts for. And ABBA wanted because they had the rights to the image. But anyway, I was fascinated by it. But it's not heavy metal and it's probably pretty boring. But let's get right on to, to me, one of the greatest records of heavy metal is uh, this record. And I only rediscovered it. I mean, I knew this was a great record, and I always played uh, Warfare a lot, but Jag Panzer, unbelievable. If if you don't have this, and, and you're like straight up U.S. metal, this is mandatory in everyone's collection, even if you get a CD of it, or a, uh, a reissue, or whatever it is. And this is from Ironworks, and it's the great Jag Panzer, I believe California... Right? Is it California? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're California. But uh, it's one of the most like aggressive, toughest, meanest, heaviest records that I own. And, and not thrash or anything, just straight up metal like Judas Priest or something. But uh, these guys play very aggressive and not in a sloppy way, like tight and... and uh, just really mean, and the songs are well written, catchy choruses, and uh, well performed. The singer Conklin, it was the tyrant, but I think he's uh, is it Hank Conklin? It's Conklin. I think it's Hank Conklin. Harry Con Hank Con, yeah. But anyway, uh, the tyrant, he's fantastic singing, and the two guitar players, I never noticed it, but they play so aggressive on their single strings, like you really feel them like holding down that fret and putting like muscle into it and and hitting hard with the pick and it comes through like like dry guitar sounds and they're they're mean and and it's just produced just perfect not much to it just guitars drums bass and and it just kicks ass i can't tell you how good this record is and it took me a long time i, mean, I always knew it was good but it took me a long time to, to realize this is 
fantastic record. And I think the last song, The Crucifix, which is in like five parts, is a little more like a Heaven and Hell, like a Black Sabbath Heaven and Hell kind of epic song. And that, I think they put like more reverb on and it sounds more like a regular metal record, regular production, 80s production. But the other ones are just so damn in your face. And uh, Warfare is great. Generally, Hostile is, is a killer aggressive track. And Cardiac Arrest, Cardiac Arrest has a... Uh, Lyrics uh, will take you, will make, will, will take you, will break you, slap you on your back with all my metal power, give you a heart attack. And I, I just picture the singer like giving someone a heart attack with his metal power, like bracelets and the whole whole setup on like, and like someone just having a heart attack from his metal power. And it's, it sounds corny, but it's, it's believable when you hear this, but uh. Killer record, and they, they put out this LP, and they put out an EP before, and I think 83. I only have the High Roller Repro, and what was it, Tyrants? And this Repro has a bunch of demos from 80, 81, and they're, they're good. They're hit or miss, a little more hard rock, some are metal, but a great package. But the four songs of the EP are the important ones, but still not as great as that record. But now... I have those, and that's all I, I need for Jag Panzer. They put out, like, records later on when they had a reunion. And I'll just show you the uh, tape hold. This is them as a four... They were five-piece, but back in the early days, they were four-piece. And they obviously look earlier. This is, like, an 82 picture or 83. But they look... This is probably 83. They're a little more heavy metal. And I did I show the back? I'm sure I showed the back. That's them in 84... And uh, I think it had an inner sleeve, but I never had an inner sleeve in this. And I'll look. I'll look like seven times every time I pull out in case I missed it. But it's it's never in there. So, Jag Pans. It's just a, uh, it's not 101 metal, but it's uh, it's up there with like, I don't know, Exciter, like, you know, stuff that is so good, but like sometimes people missed. But, uh. Another band I want to talk about, and I'll put them on because I have no music here. And this is this is not great, but uh, I'm fascinated with this band, and this is Armed Forces uh, from New York, and this is I think '84, and this is uh, Let There Be Metal, and it's not a great band, but it's a uh, absolute artifact of heavy metal. The singer is, this is Knight Rider. He's got like a high-pitched voice. It's, it's so cliche metal. And, and the way they dress, they, they came right from the heavy metal boutique. And they got all their, st their clothes right out of the rack at one of those like stores that sell the heavy metal clothing. Or in the back of a hip parader where you could order the clothes. Everything's right out of the catalog, but... It makes this record great. He's got all the bracelets. This guy's got the matching armband with the shirt. This guy's got the, uh, the zipper shirt. This guy, he's got a dagger on his, uh, the bass plate, he's got a dagger tied on. This guy. But it's uh, it's only a five song, uh, yeah, five song EP, and so it's not great, but five songs I could deal with it. And he's almost got a King Diamond thing going. I mean, obviously his only influence off Halford because they wouldn't have known a King Diamond, but it's got like a uh, kind of cool, like weird tales, like the old comic books. Um, it's got an inner, and I think it's on their own label, Metallic Flame Records out of New York. Lyrics, and the lyrics are just terrible, but terrible in the way, you know, early metal, especially American metal was. It wasn't the smartest music at the time, you know, it took 
England to bring the intelligence into it until later on with Metallicas and stuff, but the worst couplets ever. Every couplet is like a cliche, one syllable word, and I'll turn this down. I could just, I could go through every song, and I could, I'm going to skip the lines, but I'll just read like what they're rhyming here. Here's, light the night, enemy in sight. Cut the air, don't be scared, left his lair, so beware. And I, I'm skipping the whole line, but I'll just get to the last, like, three syllables. But, like, has been drawn, crack of dawn, have no fears, drawing near, stand and fight through the night. Steal and die, tween your eyes, through the mist, die by his fist, place to hide, not be defied. Uh, every song is like this. Together so long, never go wrong, look in my eyes, all those lies, burning for you, you could do, something to say, you every day. Too much time, all the time, heart on fire, you got my desire, of your hand, under your command, make it fast, it never lasts, it keeps going. And the whole album is like this, Satan's will, has to kill, weapon is the night, seize your light. And terrible... Uh, not terrible, very simple lyrics. I mean, it's heavy metal. It wasn't pretending to be anything else. And, and I'm very happy to have it. I can't recommend this to anyone. Very New Yorkish, too. Let there be. This is uh, let there be metal. Let's go to the chorus. I think there's a good groove in here, if I remember. I thought that was like a cool groove. Yeah, here it is. Well, anyway... I don't really know much about this band. But then, and this is the record I had earlier. Then there was Armed, they turned to Armed Force, but I don't really know if it's the same band, but it's the same bass player. Oh, and, and of course they have their Italians, uh, Joey Thunder Cusamano, but the uh, bass player, uh, Steve A. Tetro, is known as Torch Tetro in this record. And this is Armed Force, and as far as I could tell, because they have fake names on here. Madman Renzi, Flash Black, and Blazing Burns. But Torch Tetro, it's almost like they regressed here. Like this is uh, the Slee Stacks or something. Because this is now 85. But I showed you where they look there. And now, they have makeup on and like the ripped clothes. And this looks like it should be you know, 82, 83, and they have makeup, like Kiss, I don't know if you could see that, like, you know, or early Twisted Sister, and I don't know if this was before that, this record came out after, but I don't know if it was like demos the uh, bass player had from the early version, or he had another one. And they sent it out to Ironworks, put this out in 86. But it's not from... It, it, I mean, if it's from 86, these guys are really behind. I feel like it's demos from 84 or at the latest 85. And it took a year to get them shopped around until they had a, a, a record that was uh, maybe uh, a little loose with quality standards that, to sign them. But... Uh, this record is great too, and it's set up like a newspaper, like a world, and it's like 
a World War II newspaper or something, except like the war is the band Armed Forces is taking over the world. And it's really, really funny. Like, it, it's good. But it's about them uh, launching attacks. And the metal wars are heating up in global conflict. New York based armed force leads the East Coast ass assault. Oh, God. This record's good. And anyway, it's really funny. But uh, during a recent raid on suspected headquarters of the Armed Force Slaughter Brigade, authorities found markings on the walls, whatever, to believe the insignia of armed forces. And they, other, item, other items seized in the raids were guitar picks, drumsticks, and cassette recordings titled Heavy Artillery. And the Slaughter Brigade, an elite group of soldiers of fortune better known as Armed Slaughter Brigade, are taking applications. Interesting recruits should apply at the address below. Only those headbangers that are fit for duty will be accepted. And a special division called the Fox Corps will be set up for heavy metal women. Send photos with application. But they got them, I guess, like, they were, we're going to do a, a Germany tour, and this is, like, them attacking Germany. But it, it's really funny. I mean, I'm spent too much time reading it, but... But it's a different singer, and it's... How much is this for? And the other record, this record might be better, but it's completely different. But they're they're connected, armed forces to armed force, and it's on uh, Ironworks. And I'll just put the the first track on for a minute. This way you hear them, you don't have to you don't have to buy them or look them up. But uh, and this is the other label. It's a good singer here. Um, it's not the ridiculousness. He reminds me of someone, but I can't think of it. But the same simple riffs, cliche metal. It's a hair metal kind of singer, but it's straight up U.S. metal. Oh, 17 minutes, too much. Well, anyway, that's that. Let me just go through. I got four more. I could do them quick because there's not too much to talk about. I got, uh... Stormtrooper, new wave of British heavy metal band, uh, high roller release. It's from, I think, 81. 80, 81. There they are. This is not a great record. They were a little bit older than, like, maybe like a year or two older than, than like, let's say, the Maidens. This is 80, 81. The interesting thing about this band is they, they use a Moog synthesizer, so you get that, like, woo! All, all the Moog, like the vintage Moog sounds in there. And they're a little proggy. Um, but I found them kind of be kind of boring. I mean, not terrible, but it's not really my bag of like the, the dirt bag, new wave of British heavy metal. But the good thing about this, it came with the uh, 45, and these are the best two songs, Pride Before Fall and Still Coming Home. And this is a repro of the uh, original. I don't remember what label, if they put it out themselves. Recorded in Bath, England. Just high rollers. But, you know, this is probably $30. Who knows how much it is. But I'm just as happy as the repro of this single to put in my collection. Even though the LP probably won't get played too much. It's got the book in it. and It's, it's good, but another record I can't recommend. But these songs, Pride Before Fall, is a good one. And, and there's a few stormtroopers you get confused. I got the Ivory Tiger. I think Greeno showed this, and people. It was an EP from Chicago, maybe '85. And this is a full record. And I didn't find this great. I found it being pretty good U.S. metal. I found it a little dark sounding, like it was recorded off a cassette kind of sound. But 
maybe it's just how it was. It's not the best production. And it, it's decent. I think Side 1 is six tracks that were the EP, and then there's another six tracks which were like demos and stuff. But the good song on here, which I found is No Illusions, which is, is a fantastic track. And it starts off as like the whole Dungeons and Dragons, and not to keep talking about lyrics, I'm, talking, I'm not a big lyric guy, but I just found this track to be like a genius song, and I can put it on real quick, and then I'll, uh, I'll not have to needle drop anything else. But it's singing Dungeons and Dragons. We traveled many years to reach... Oh, it's on blue vinyl. It's got a nice uh, label. And no illusions. I, see some. I think it starts off kind of fantasy-ish, but the lyrics sound like it could be a Dio song. Travel many years to reach a world of fantasy. Across the ocean we sailed the seven seas. So many legends, I don't know, world of fantasy, tales of dragons, witches and such. And then they go into the chorus, which is... This way, yeah. I just got the whole interview, the story of the band. It's a, it's a good record. It sounds like it's going to be like a 80s uh, it's demons and swords kind of song. Then they go for the chorus, they go into like street metal, like New York or Chicago urban street metal with the chorus Got No Illusions, and I love it, like the, the poor grammar, talking like the way I talk, and might be hard to hear. Here comes the chorus. But I, I love that, taking that fantasy thing and then just painting this whole fantasy image and just like cutting it down with, I got no illusions. We got no, got no illusions. I, I, it's pure genius. And in this record, Greeno showed, he actually showed two times, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, This Rising is absolutely amazing record, Swedish band, which sounded like the new, they were influenced off the new wave of British heavy metal, and this, what is this called? Inside the Universe. And I think they had one single with three tracks, I believe, Inside the Universe, Metal Bird, and She Got Bright Eyes. She Got Bright Eyes is, is fantastic track. But uh, the whole record is really good. It's like getting a new wave of British heavy metal band, but they're, they're fast and they're, they're hooky and sung in English. But uh, Rock is in the Blood on the B-side is just a great track. It's almost like dumb a little bit, but it's just, I can't write, for me, for people like new wave of British heavy metal and the early metal and that whole vibe, I can't recommend this record enough. It, it's so good. I mean, if you don't like 1982 sound British metal, you know, this might not be for you. But if you dig that early New Wave British heavy metal, this record is solid. And it's got the story. And they're, they're fantastic guitar players. Even, like, the simple stuff they do, it, it's just, it's really good. And you got, uh, what do you got, 13 tracks. I think there's two live songs. And in another version of Bright Eyes, like a, a faster version or rougher version. But anyway, that. And then I'll end with this last one, which I always had. Or I, I, didn't, I haven't always had, but I had it for a long time. And I never talked about it, I don't think. Is Trouble, the Unplugged record, which came out. This says 2009, but I want to say this was in... Maybe it was 2000. I want to say it was a little earlier than that. Maybe it was on CD earlier. Maybe the early 2000s. But it's absolutely fantastic and the acoustic stuff and the musicianship and it's just it's really a wonderful record i think there's one two three four five six. i think it's six unplugged songs on here but then they put in three like demos or 
recordings that didn't make a record, and I, I don't. I think they they ruined the record, not ruin it, but they ruined the continuity of the record. I mean, it's not terrible stuff. And then they end with a a, a well produced version of, of a cover of the Yardbirds' "Heart Full of Soul," which is amazing. And I'll pull this record out just to hear that song. It's pretty true to the uh, original, except when they get to the chorus, it's really galloping and going really, really, really heavy and mean. But it's a it's a wonderful record. The only criticism is those took those three tracks because I feel like the vinyl is really squished. The uh, grooves are so close together because they tried to fit too much too much music on there. And if it's the unplugged record, it should just be the unplugged and then end with heart full of soul. But highly recommended record. And that was too long. 25 minutes was too long for this. Sorry, guys. Take care.